Welcome to Taking Stock. I'm Amanda Lang. Coming up on the show, inflation ticks higher again, driven by the cost of housing and food. And with shelter costs in focus, rents hit record highs across the country. Plus, a looming problem for mortgage renewals that's worth thinking ahead on. That's all coming up. First, for the week that was in business, it's time for the briefs. The rate of inflation rose in July, up 3.3 percent after several months of declines. That's a disappointment after hopes it was closing in on the 2 percent range the Bank of Canada targets. Instead, the bank's own rate hikes have made mortgages pricier, and the almost 31 percent increase in those costs was a big factor in July's jump. Grocery prices are still climbing, though the rate of that climb has slowed slightly. The average price of a home in Canada rose 6.3% in July compared to a year ago, with the volume of sales climbing well above last year's level, but flat with June. Inflation data is raising the prospect of another Bank of Canada increase in rates, and some real estate experts expect a busy fall as buyers look to make a purchase before further increases. Meanwhile, the pace of new home building fell 10% in July from June's high level. It does remain above the five-year average. Still, economists said the decline to 254,000 starts is a sign that higher interest rates may be taking a toll on some builders. And the biggest decline was for multi-unit starts, which fell 12%. U.S. consumers continue to spend but are focusing on things not affected by rising credit costs. Overall, sales rose 1 percent, excluding autos and gas in July, with strong spending in areas like dining, entertainment and clothing. Higher interest rates are slowing sales of things like homes, cars and furniture in the U.S. The future of WeWork is in doubt after the workspace sharing company said its ability to continue as a going concern is up in the air. So too are the plans for the 700,000 people who use its spaces and the many commercial landlords it leaves hanging. WeWork sounded the warning when it reported its recent results. It has lost about $600 million U.S. in the past six months. Oil and gas producer Occidental Petroleum plans to buy Canadian firm Carbon Engineering for $1.1 billion U.S. Carbon Engineering is a B.C.-based clean tech firm with a patent to extract carbon out of the air. It's in the process of building the first large-scale commercial facility in the United States. Carbon Engineering will become a wholly owned subsidiary of Occidental when the deal closes. And those are your business briefs. Well, inflation has been trending in the right direction, but is it central bank rate hikes that are doing it? Jean-Francois Perrault is Senior Vice President and Chief Economist at Scotiabank. Thanks for being with us. You're very welcome. So let's start right there with what you think is driving inflation and I guess in the same vein, what is helping cool it? Is it the central bank or is it other factors? Well, I mean, the central banks are clearly having an impact now. It, I think it's a stretch to say that they're having the majority of impact in terms of the decline in inflation that we've seen. We know that's linked to oil prices. We know that's linked to base price effects. We know that's linked to normalization of supply chains. Central banks don't really have a role to play in that side of things. But we also know that spending is almost certainly lower than otherwise would have been the case had central banks not increased rates as much as they had. So there's for sure some impact of mm-hmm. what central banks have done so far, probably more that to come. But I think the majority of the inflation decline that we've seen is really stuff that's outside of what central banks have been able to, uh, to influence. So one thing that they are able to influence, Jean-François, and it's interesting, you know, for ordinary people, they're like, wait a minute, central bank hikes are causing mortgage costs to go up. That was one of the biggest components of the inflationary pressure this month. What are we to make of that? They're causing inflation while they try to cure it. I mean, it's that's just the, the, the hard truth of the matter, right? When central banks are trying to slow things down, they're trying to slow things down by making certain things more expensive, the cost of credit more expensive. And of course, mortgages are a big part of the consumer basket for most individuals. So as we've been raising rates, sorry, as they've been raising rates, um, they're counting on the fact that people are paying more for mortgages to slow things down, even though it's creating inflation in, in kind of some of the inflation measures. Now, of course, they're looking through that. They mm-hmm. fully well know that by raising rates, they are actually contributing to inflation. So they're taking things like mortgage interest costs out of how they view inflation just to make sure they've got the right bead on where where dynamics are. And, you know, speaking of looking through it, uh, a lot of people are looking forward to their renewals of mortgages and what might be a slightly different reality of where rates are sitting. What's your what's your advice on how people should be thinking about that? Even if we get past this phase and the bank is lowering rates, will they go back to where they were or will they be permanently a little higher? 
Well, they've got to be permanently higher, right? I mean, the, the reality is that, you know, basically from 2009 to, you know, the few months before the pandemic, we were not in a normal rate environment. Right. The reality was that back then, post financial crisis, the challenge central banks had is the opposite challenge that we have now. They've been trying to they were trying to raise inflation to two percent. So they had unusually low interest rates from a historical perspective. Going forward, as we're converging down from the other side, you know, trying to bring inflation down to two percent, um, you can expect coming out of that that we land assuming they're successful, that we land in what's, you know, we'd consider to be a more normal rate space. And and, and the banks actually, the bank has been given guidance on that to some yeah. extent. You know, they call this kind of the neutral rate of interest, and, and which they put at between 2 and 3%. So, you know, 2 and a half, we'll say. That's kind of the base rate against which other rates are then priced. One wild card, we've only got 30 seconds, but that, of course, is a recession, which would cause them to try to help us all out by lowering rates. Right. Slow down in China, some signs of weakness here and there, not a lot. But what's your view of how we might fare here? Are we going to see a recession at all? Listen, I mean, it's looking increasingly less likely. Um, you know, there has been a big rate increase, and that is slowing things down. So we're seeing evidence of a bit of a slowdown in Canada. We're going to get GDP data in a couple of weeks. We're seeing, on the other hand, though, in the U.S., the opposite of that. We're mm-hmm. seeing data for the third quarter, which is <laughs> spectacularly strong so far. So you can pretty well rule out a recession of short run in the U.S. And if you're doing that, thinking about it from Canadian terms, you know, the U.S. is our largest trading partner. That does mean that things are looking brighter in Canada just by virtue of the fact that the U.S. itself is is just powering forward right now. Hmm. Jean-François, so good to have you. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Jean-François Perrault is Senior Vice President and Chief Economist at Scotiabank. Coming up, a shortage of rental units is sending rents to record levels. That's a problem that might be around for a while. Stay with us.